Welcome to another vlog in the Dragon Slayer Workshop with Ram Rambling. Uh, thank you for your support and your comments on uh, what started out as a circus wagon to a circus cage prop. <laughs> for me, I just uploaded that last night. For you guys, that was two weeks ago. So hopefully some of you have seen it. While we're on the subject of uploading, something I wanted to bring up real quick. Last couple years, right about this time, I've been taught I always bring up subscribers on my YouTube channel. And if I get to a thousand subscription, you know, a thousand subscribers, I do a subscriber contest with some really nice prizes. Uh, I haven't hit a thousand yet. But we're up to 981 subscribers, so we're about 15 subscribers away, roughly, give or take a few. Uh, if I can, if you guys are watching this either on Instagram or over on Facebook, hit the YouTube link, go to my YouTube page, subscribe to me by, well, let's say October 3rd. If we can hit a, get those 15 more subscribers by October 3rd, I'll do the subscriber contest, and we'll have some neat prizes this year. So subscribe. Let's get this. Let's hit the thousand benchmark and get that done and over with. Now, on to the next prop, or actually part two of the prop we're working on. Uh, circus cage is done. It's still sitting out on the patio. Now we need to work on the mech. And we're going to do a variant of sorts of a two bar lifter. And the plans I've got here come from Pandemic Cemetery. Dead with Dave. You can go over to his site and get them from him. He's got several plans for several different mechs and stuff that you can get. They're kind of cool. He does good work. Dead with Dave, you know, Dead with Dave Home Honors Award thing. You know, award-winning, uh, super-powered, super-star show. Does it once a year. You know, go show him some love. Buy some of his plans. But uh, anyway, we're going to do a variant of his two-bar lifter. Uh, I've got one of these in my haunt already. I've used it uh, for my pirate that stands up, swings his arm, what have you. Uh, we're going to do another one, kind of, sort of. Uh, the uh, clown mech that I'm putting in the cage is going to be supersized. That one does about a three foot, the, the mech if you go by the plan is about three foot left, maybe four. Uh, this one I need to do seven, seven feet. So from the base of the cage up to about here when it's fully extended. You know, so you can see where my hand is there. It's about where I need to go. So I need to supersize the base, do a bigger base on it, and I need to do a taller mast on it. And then the arms are going to be a little bit bigger. And then I went ahead and ordered a more powerful cylinder, which runs it, uh, which is on its way. Two days shipping on that. Thank you, Automation Direct. Uh, so uh, I'm sitting here in my shop getting ready, to do, uh, getting ready to do the project. I haven't bought any materials yet, but I have some stock down here left over from previous props. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the base out of this stuff. And that's about an inch and a half square tubing. And I'll do the base and the mast out of the bigger stuff. And then the arms I'm going to do out of this one inch square tubing. And I'm going to need more of that one inch square tubing. I know I don't have enough to do the full mech for everything I want to do. But uh, we're going to get started, I'm going to get my measurements, and we're going to start getting the base cut out, ground down, and then we're going to use my wire feed welder to weld it all together. Well, it's going after seven. We've had a pretty good day. Made some progress, and as far as I'm going to go today, I've got some adjustments to make to the mech. And I'll cover that here in just a sec. But there's the mech. This is a part that moves here for the lifting end of it. I just got I just got these done. 
but I went and overdid the uh, overdid the uh, frame, oversized the frame, it's sticking out a little bit longer. And I might make an adjustment to that and cut it off here and here and move this bar back. It's, uh, I noticed my mast after I got it on had a slight bend in it and it's sitting too far back. So I might just chop it off tomorrow and insert a new cross piece. I'll shorten it up an inch or about an inch and a half. Uh, with the mast sitting so far up and with the arms sticking so far out, I went ahead and braced it. You can go over here on the side so you can see it a little bit. That diagonal piece going down for the front. And then I've also braced the uh, corners, you know, going up to the mast too so it doesn't go side to side. Now on the plans that uh, Dead with Dave did, he had the mast, which is this part here, centered on the base. I offset it a little bit. That's why my uh, braces are uh, off. I offset it so the arms would fall dead center on the uh, frame. With this being so big, I wanted that centered on the base. Now, the adjustment I need to make. Okay, come on. Here we go. Or you can see it lifting up is to the arms. I think I'm going to end up shortening them about five, six inches. Inches. By the time I do what I want to do to hold the prop, it's going to be right up against the cage, and I want it a little bit further back. It's also going up way too high, so I need to shorten it down a little bit. So I'm only going to, I've got them set at a 32 inch arm now, probably going to go down to probably about a 26 inch arm. Uh, the uh, arms on the uh, blueprints were 18 inch arms. And that's, I don't know, I might do an 18, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to mess with it, trial and fit. Right now I just got the bolts here in the corners in temporary, you know, so I can mess with it. So, going to have to wait and see, <laughs> kind of thing, and uh, see what we end up coming up with. But that is a good start. I spent most of the day doing the base and the mast. Welcome to the start of another warm day. It's 12 o'clock and it's already 82 in the shade. <laughs> uh, been out here for about two hours, dinking around a little bit. And I got my adjustments done to the mech. I've got the uh, what will be the uh, backbone for the chest piece at the level I want it. Now let's get this open. And we'll go into depth a little bit here. Now the bottom, I went and cut off so I have a little bit more play in here. Uh, the base was 38 inches long, it's now 36 and a half, so I took about an inch and a half off the base. The arms, I also cut down and redrilled the holes here, and the arms were originally 32 inches, they stuck out about to here. Let me get you a good angle on it. I took 10 inches off, they're 22 inches, so it's sitting back further, which is the way I kind of like it. And then the other adjustment I did was the mast. You can see the spot right there where the arms were rubbing. It's now down to there. The mast was originally 42 and a half inches tall. It's down to 34 and a half. So, oh God, what would that be? Five, six, seven, about seven and a half inches, I lowered it. So we got that done. Uh, I'm out here dinking around with some more geometry now. Uh, what I want to do, what I'm, I'm adding to, to the mech, is I need another bar out here on the front that's going to be hinged. I'm going to put a two inch cyl uh, cylinder on it so the bar will rock out here. Then that will have the uh, chest, the arms, and the head on it. So it will actually come out, you know, 
toward the edge of the thing. The hands will actually go over the edge uh, of the uh, cage, I'm hoping. And that's kind of what I'm working on now. I've got a uh, filler piece. This isn't the right length in here. But I'm just getting ready to hook up these brackets. These two brackets, uh, i got to get welded onto here. And I want to try to test fit on it first to make sure they don't bind up on the arms when the arm goes all the way up. Okay, test fit. I cut two four inch pieces on either side, drilled a hole through it. And this is going to have, this, this piece here is a uh, test piece. It's not quite long, I need it up another couple of inches. But it serves a purpose. It will be sitting pretty much in that location when the prop is off. And then when the solenoid activates, it will come out about two inches. And I'll probably mount the uh, cylinder for it closer to the base down there. So we'll get the full two inch travel, which will cause the head. Yeah, let's see here, trying to get you yeah, yeah, out to about there. You know, so a good two inch travel there on that. I can have it do a couple of rocks here rocking back and forth while it's in the down position and then suck back up shoot up and then rock out again at least that's what I am going for but right now I need to get this piece off and this back piece off and I gotta go in and get these two pieces welded on oh well, it's going on about dinner time been taking a lot of breaks today. It hit over 100. It was supposed to be 105. And I think it got around 99 to 102. All I know it was 99. Uh, what was it? 92 degrees in the shade. But we made some progress on the mech. We got the legs done. In fact, I just finished the legs. I went and uh, soldered and not soldered, but welded a hinge onto the legs. That's in its full upright position. And here, let me get dropped down into its seated position. There we go, now it's in its seated position. But, we got the legs going, and right now they're sticking a little close. I got, this needs to go back a little bit. And I'll suck it in so it's not so close to the gate. And the set dresser's trying to sneak her way through here, but she's not making it. Only if you want onions in your tuna. Yeah. Grilled tuna sandwiches for uh, dinner, and we're doing Walla Walla sweet onions. But uh, anyway, we got the hips on, and I did it 18 inches across. I'm using some two-inch metal for the legs, and I have no idea what the length is. Uh, oh yeah, I do. 48 inches total on uh, just the legs, and then we got the start of the trunk. Now my next chore is I've got to get my mast for here figured out that will come up and it's going to go 14 inches above this and that will have a uh, cylinder here to make it rock forward and back. The face of the prop has come in. There's the clown. <laughs> That's the clown. Now I've got it attached to a styrofoam head. You know it's just, I don't know if you call that a half mask or not because it doesn't cover the whole head. It only covers the front half. So Ann's going to have to design something to hide the star from head. But that's going to be on top of the mech. That's going to be the face of the uh, jack-in-the-box clown. So we got that in. Well, it's the end of the day. And I'm as far as I can go. I'm kind of at, in a stuck position right now. I can't go any further on the mech until the cylinders come in. Now they should technically be in tomorrow sometime, probably late day tomorrow, so I don't know if I'll get get to uh, installing them at all. Uh, I still need to weld some brackets and stuff on the mech for the, uh, you know, to hold each end of the cylinders. I got one that goes on the mast there, and another one that goes on the arm, which will control the lifting, and I've got another set of brackets here. I need to put on for the little two inch cylinder. 
that will be out here on it. Now we did do a design change. I was going to put solid arms out, you know, and have them outreached. So when this guy rocked forward, he would uh, look like he's reaching out over the cage. The only problem we had is when this thing is in the seated position, I want it to thump out a couple of times like that. And if I do that, the arms would have hit and probably shattered the front of the cage or jammed up by getting hooked up. So I was talking to the wife, we were thinking about, and we decided we'll just put some chains on here for the arms and I'll stiffen them up a little bit with uh, some pool noodle, uh, you know, sections of pool noodles on it. And originally I was going to do, you know, some gloved hands and have them sewed to the costume and just hook the hands here. I think what we're going to do is I'm going to leave the chains hanging over and we'll just have the sleeve coming up and over and have the uh, hands dangle here. Kind of like that idea. But uh, for the most part, the neck is done. It's going to loom out like that. You know, it'll go up and then plunge out. So hopefully that'll freak people out. Well, it's going on about 3.30 in the afternoon and I'm just now making it out in, into the shop. Uh, we've had errands to do. I had to get the trailer and the truck set up and ready to go for tomorrow. I still got more stuff for work related stuff I need to do in the house. So I'll do that later tonight. I uh, got a couple other small haunt related projects going. I needed to count on my skins and what have you. Make sure I had the right numbers. Uh, wife comes down. I'd just gone in the house to cool off. She says, Mike, your stuff came. What stuff? The only thing that's supposed to come are the cylinders. I hope it's the cylinders. Guess what? It's the cylinders. And they come in this huge fucking box stuffed with paper. Why the hell do they ship that little in that big of a goddamn box? Seems like it'd be more economical to have a smaller box, you know, save them money. But uh, anyway, now that these are in, I can continue on with the project. I don't know how far I'm going to get. I've got this monster of a one here, and it's a big heavy duty one, and it's got a, a six inch throw, in other words this blue part up here comes out six inches. That's going to be the one that raises the thing up and down. And then this one, I've got, I've got a stupid question, I'll have to talk to Tim about it. But this one is a two inch throw. That's as far as a rod comes out. That's about two inches. If it's two inches, why is the body of it over four inches? That's almost five, six inches long. <laughs> I'm thinking, holy crap, I don't need it that long. I was hoping for something about half that size. And actually, that's what I was planning on. But anyway, I got to get mounting bra brackets fabricated for both this one and this one. And then, I could get them attached to the mech and that will be another major step down. We made some progress and as you can tell I've got the mech in the workshop. I didn't want to leave it sitting down on the patio while we were gone and out of town. I uh, took about three hours to go through and fabricate these fittings. One there, I've got a double one there and then the plate down here. It took almost three hours to replicate it. This is one I had to weld together. Uh, what I ended up using, this is what we ended up using. And I just cut strips out of it, tack weld them together to double it up in spots when needed. But uh, we ended up getting one piston installed. I uh, went and welded the brackets on. And it works. I can't show you because it hits the uh, lights in here. Well, we got that done. My uh, next chore is this one here. And I got the bracket on it that fits on there. And I need to make the ass end bracket for this, you know, so I can get it positioned where I want it. And Tim, if you watch this, answer me a question. Or Tim Thompson. He's the one that uh, helped, helped me with the, with the cylinders. And a thank you to Tim Thompson on that one. But answer me a question. 
This thing has a two inch throw. Why the hell is the body six inches long? You know, I figured maybe like a three inch long cylinder, maybe four at the most. You know, I was expecting a small cylinder, not a freaking monster like that. <laughs> of course, I probably should have stated that too when we were looking things up. Yeah, Tim Thompson, big thank you out to him. He helped me. Sorry, that's the fan sounding off. But uh, he helped me with uh, ordering the parts and stuff for the uh, cylinders. I always have trouble with those, so I always kind of go to him. Usually about once a year, hey Tim, can you do a chat? <laughs> Got questions. Takes about 20 minutes. We have all the parts ordered, and we sit there and bullshit for a while. Uh, but uh, anyway, Monday, when we get back to it, I got to come in, get this cylinder put on here, and then the wife and I were talking. I've got some uh, round bar left over from the hammer and clown. I'm going to weld on some ribs onto this mass of the uh, the chest sticks out and then we've got to take uh, pool noodles and cover a lot of the arms the legs and what have you uh, before I do the pool noodles though I think we'll probably tear this thing apart and get it painted but you know those are the steps I've got left uh, welcome to Monday uh, been a busy busy day uh, had errands to do this morning, got them done, and then we went out and we actually bought the fabric to go on the mech to do the clown costume. Uh, not going to go too much into that. I'm going to let that be a surprise. That's a project Sue Ann is working on. I kind of told her what I wanted. We picked out the cloth. She's going to sew it together. I uh, got back from that, got out here. I left you last week. We had pretty much the whole mech done including this cylinder which does the rising and it all works good. It took me a while to fabricate that bracket. Today we've been working on the other cylinder. This one right here. And this is the one that controls it going in and out two inches. Had a heck of a time fabricating that bracket. In fact I ended up breaking my vise trying to cold forge it or you know the corner on it tore it loose from the uh, table but we got that fixed that was a quick easy one but anyway we fabricated this bracket got it welded on and then this bracket we fabricated last week got it welded on and then I got to thinking you know it's only going out two inches right now it will not hit the cage but God forbid something happened. The weld fails here, which it shouldn't because there's more than enough weld on it. Or it fails here. And I've had a couple of cylinders do that. They've come unscrewed from the uh, from their mounting bracket. This piece would flop all the way over. And with this just clearing the outside of the cage by about an inch to two inches, it would jam up or get caught up and this lifter thing would just tear the hell out of the cage. So I wanted something that would prevent it from going much further than that. So I fabricated a little safety strap out of some metal, welded it onto both sides. And as you can see, there's about a quarter inch play from where this stops and where this it starts. So if this ever comes loose, it will hit here and won't go any further. And that will give me about an inch to inch and a half room on the cage so the head and stuff doesn't bind up in the cage in case it fails. Just a little bit of extra security. Uh, other than that, the mech itself is for the most part done. I got my, here get back here, get a better shot. You know, so it's going to go out pretty much like that. And I'll have it doing something like that in the seated position. And then she'll suck up, shoot up in the air, and then rah, out at, you know, rah, out at people. Okay, ribs are done. Soldered on. They're not the prettiest, but they're on there good. Now, since I got this piece off, and that was the last of the welding I needed to do, it's time to get outside or uh, out on the patio and start tearing that mech apart. I gotta break it all down into its individual pieces so tomorrow I can get it cleaned and painted. Well, it's the next day. We got part of it dis uh, disassembled last night. We finished the rest off this morning. 
Uh, we're down to basically five pieces, not counting the uh, cylinders and all its mounting brackets and all that stuff that need to be cleaned, need to be painted. Now, we have the rib cage, the legs, and this is also the part that holds the rib cage. We've got the two arms that come off the uh, base that does the actual lifting of the mech. And then we've got the base. Now I did do a design change. The uh, legs, end of the legs here, sit right here against this bar. And I was noticing when it was on the table, when I was trying to lift it and stuff up on the table, the table's not perfectly flat. And the feet were wanting to uh, go in underneath that bar and bind up. Uh, even though I'm going to have this bolted down to its platform, I got to thinking it might, at one point, you know, if the brackets work loose, the feet might do that on the uh, platform. So, to prevent that, I went and saw, I just soldered, uh, welded two plates on here, little pieces that the feet will sit on, and that will prevent the feet from sliding underneath that bar. So I did do one alter alteration today. But, uh, my next chore now is I've got to go through here and wipe all this down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some Windex and a towel and basically just go over every piece thoroughly as I can for two reasons. Uh, one, to get whatever dirt, dirt and like that tan colored stuff there, uh, some smoke residue from the welding. I need to get that off or the paint's not going to stick. The other thing is the metal itself. When this comes out of the foundry and they ship it to their suppliers, they coat it with an oil to help keep it from rusting. You know, while you know it's sitting out in the stockyards and stuff. The uh, problem with that oil is it won't allow the paint to adhere either. So I need to get as much of that oil off as I can. So I'm gonna have to go through and rub down each piece. Then we can get into doing the painting. All in all, not a bad day. We're dang near done building the mess. Uh, we got in here this morning, the first clip, and we got disassembled, we got it clean, and as you can see, we got it painted. And you'll notice there's brass and silver. I just used some uh, leftover metal paint that I had. I really wasn't worried about co uh, color due to the fact the majority of the mech's going to be covered by a costume. <laughs> But we've got final assembly is done. It is all bolted together. I've cut off the screws. I'm gonna, I still got to take my grinder over them and then uh, even them out so they don't snag on things. That's a couple of minute job. I'll do that tomorrow. Uh, barring that, we have two other steps to do. Both of them real quick. Both of them real easy. Actually, three steps. One, I need to get my air lines for the uh, cylinders there. I got that one there and the big one down there. Need to be ran and dropped down the back. I need to get those ran. Uh, the other one is I got a bunch of pool noodles that we bought yesterday, Monday. And I got to come in and put the pool noodles on the shoulders, on the ribs, and on the legs and the uh, waistline here. And that will probably, you know, depending on how much cutting, fitting, and everything else, probably about an hour to do. And then the third, th third and final thing is we're going to take this out, get it bolted into place in the cage. And so just sitting there, we'll actually bolt it in to make sure it's going to anchor down right. And then we'll be pretty much done with this project, except for costuming, which Sue started working on today. <laughs> and... Uh, once this thing's mounted in the cage, you can be bring out pieces out and you know test fitting and what have you. So we'll get there eventually. Well, I'm kind of at a stalemate. But I'll get into that in a bit. Wanted to show you. Got the mask up in there. I still need to do some eyeballs for it. I might find something out spirit I like. I'll just glue them in. Uh, but we got the headpiece on. We've got the whole thing. Pool noodle, pool noodled, <laughs> Jesus. and then did the arms to beef up the chain a bit, we got the thighs done, 
I did not do the lower leg because the lower leg actually rests on the metal when it's in the down position and it would have bound the machine up and caused problems. So I just left those bare. But we got all the pool noodling done. Then I went through and ran all my air lines and everything's been tested. You know, so the lines aren't going to bunch up. Uh, we got the uh, big cylinder down there taken care of as well and for right now I've just got the airlines coiled uh, I left uh, plenty of extra so I can drop them through the crack and out the back back here where I can work on it and test it and stuff I might shorten them up at a later date I don't know now where I'm stymied at or stalemated at the solenoids and that's the thing that hooks up to the airline and they're basically an electric switch that allows the air to come in and out of the cylinders. I ordered those over a week ago. They're supposed to be here by September 2nd at the latest. So it could be another week or two before I can get this thing actually working. In the meantime, Sue Ann is diligently in the house working on the costuming. We've had one test fit on this so far. And the trunk part fits good, but the arms and the legs are kind of baggy. So she's got to take some seams in and do some fitting and what have you to get the costume done. Uh, she won't have it done this week. Uh, she's working on the basic costuming, and then there's all the gloves and the ruffles and the pom-pom buttons, you know, and all that. So it'll be sometime next week before she's done with that. So, instead of sitting around twirling my thumbs, and we are running down into crunch time, I'm going to call this prop unofficially done. Uh, I'm not going to do any more footage on it. And then what we're going to end up doing is once I get the solenoids in and Sue's done with the costume, I'll do a full-fledged night and day or day and night reveal footage where you'll see the whole thing complete with the uh, costume on there and working, both lunging in and out on the chest and going up and down like it will be in the haunt. And I'm even going to pull out some of my LED lighting to light it up. So, in uh, that, it could end up being next week. It could be the week after. It all depends on when those damn solenoids come in. Uh, and Swan's so done with the costume. Once that's all done, we can, you know, and everything's here, we can do the reveal video. But until then, I'm calling this vlog done. Uh, don't know uh, what's on my schedule for tomorrow. I know I have a crap ton of errands. So it's probably going to be first part of the week. We're going to get started on the next major prop, which is going to be the reworking of the Clifford display, my big red dog that's in the water room. I'm going to start working on the prop that's going to replace him. So don't know how long of a prop that's going to be. <laughs> right now, I think with only having four days a week to work on the Jack in the Box clown, I think I've got, let's see, two weeks, three weeks. This would be the fourth week. So it's taking me four weeks to get that prop done. Uh, so four, eight, 16 days ugh, total. So anyway, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to say stay spooky. Stay toxic.